Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls around the world. It's time to experience the O's on the original sports podcast. Hey, cheers, everybody. The crew and I are celebrating Memorial Day today. We're at McClintock Distillery in downtown Frederick. Uh, Memorial Day is a time to honor and remember those who have served in the military. So it's just fitting that we tie our sports teams to honor those guys and reflect on sacrifices and service each member had. We're going to be doing a bunch of different people. Sis has baseball guys. Sheen has some, some football guys. And I'm going to bring you a plethora of a couple of other other sports to tie into this. Uh, we're going to look at it through the lens of sports and whether we're going to celebrate athletes or examine connections that they've had to sports and military service. We're just looking at iconic moments that happen in, in sports on Memorial Day weekend. Um, we're going to talk about it all. So um, let's get this thing rolling. Shane, man, you, you look a little tired today, my brother. Very tired. Where you been? I was in Cooperstown this weekend. Uh, I went to the Hall of Fame up in Cooperstown, uh, the East-West game. It uh, honors uh, black baseball, honors and celebrates black baseball of the past. Um, met a few of uh, my idols. Uh, met Dave Winfield. Woo! Big Dave, uh, the only athlete. I don't think he's the only. I did some research on this. I don't think he's the only, but he was drafted by MLB, uh, uh, NBA, NFL, NBA. NFL yeah. NBA, CBA. ABA. I think he's only one five, but the weird part about the NFL is he never played football in high in college. So right. He went to Minnesota, by the way. He played baseball and basketball. basketball yes. But he was drafted by all those. Uh, I met Eddie Murray, who I'm sorry I didn't know has over 500 home runs. Yeah. You didn't, didn't know, know that? that? No. For the Orioles. Yes, for the Orioles. Yeah. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I posted hero. a picture on Facebook and people <clears throat> tore me a new one. But yeah. Um, that's all right. CC Sabathia, I met him this weekend. Nice guy. Him and his wife Amber, uh, great people. Uh, I met uh, oh the kid, King Griffey Jr. Oh, you met KGJ? Yeah, yeah. Was his dad kid. there? Was his dad there? No, he wasn't. It was just him. He was in and out a lot. I don't think he just. I don't think he wanted to be. He's seen. been doing a lot of commercials lately. Yeah. Yeah. I'm oh, junior. He's, oh, he's back I, involved with baseball. Okay. He's well, back involved. I do know that. I do know that Mr. Winfield. Is some does something for MLB, and I think Mr. Sabathia also. So you said you saw Big Cecil? No, I saw Prince, the, the Prince son. Builder. Yes, I said yes, but I also seen Prince's son, who's bigger than both of them. He's only a junior. He's going to be a senior next year, but yes. In high school. High school, yes. Whoa, huge. Bigger than both of them? Yes, yes. No, Man. no football in his <clears throat> career. No football. I asked him what he played. He, I said you play football. He said nope, baseball. I didn't want to challenge him. Usually I say, hey, you're a football player. I wasn't telling him that because uh, <laughs> I think he would have beat me up. Was he I'm thick dead serious. was he like those Very guys? Thick. No, thick. Well, I can't wait to do check him out on some video to see see him hit this ball because it has to be going far. He's huge. That's all I kept saying the whole time I seen him. Huge. So as a junior, next year, senior year, he'll get drafted next year. More than likely. You yeah, know where be. he won't end up? Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh because he'll be too good to – to end up there, right? Uh, yeah. You know, they're lucky they got schemes. <laughs> He'll end up in uh, Oakland. No, maybe. Yeah. You know, they do a lottery now for baseball. Oh, yeah. So he can end up a million different places. You know, at the end of the day, he'll end up with the Yankees or Dodgers. Do you guys today. like that lottery or just, hey, we suck. We should get the number one pick. Pittsburgh would have like 10 number one picks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't think it's going to help us. If we're not going to pay these guys, man. No, because that's weird. what that's what NBA does. The lot they were just no. talking about that in uh, the paper yesterday, I believe. You know, while we have them here, we might just yeah. try to do something. But they're already saying he's going to be gone by that time. So, well, at least they got him for seven years under arbitration. Okay, that's good. You know, that's that's. I mean, you got what you got right there under arbitration. Okay. So let's see if they can do something in seven years. I guess if if that team would go on and somehow, some way, get super successful for a year or two, win a World Series, then we could Ooh. go back to another. Another yeah. 30 years. I'll did you say Pittsburgh then. and World Series in the same sentence? I did. Yeah, you're reaching. Oh, shit. I don't know if our kids are I did. See that. You're reaching. I don't know if our yeah. kids are going to see that. Uh, it is what it is. Hey, fellas, how, how do you celebrate Memorial Day? Um, uh, With a cookout of some sort? Yeah. A, 
party. Well, not a party. Yeah, probably just a coke out. Cousin Vaughn. <laughs> he wants to be on the show, by the way. Oh, yeah. he ain't bringing Vaughn. Vaughn, you ain't coming on the show. <laughs> you ain't coming on. Here. You'll be all fired up. Who knows what you'll be saying? He's, he has a motto. He says, don't believe in con. Trust Vaughn. When it comes to the Steelers. Was he running for president or something? <laughs> I love Vaughn. He's because they're all cons and politics. Let Vaughn be on the show. I'd love to hear what he has to say. He, he, he said, you guys trust Con? Believe in Vaughn. Where's he living at now? He's uh, Eastern Shore, over, over across, close to Ocean City. Okay, we'll put him on virtually so he don't – oh, him and Chops in the same show? Woo! There you go. Hey, shout out to our boy Chops. Uh, he's fishing this weekend. He's camping. Where Someone he? said he's camping. What, like, is he glamping or camping? Did he um, hike in? I can't see Chops glamping. Did he hike in? Oh, I don't know about is that. Pitch a tent. So if you hop, you gotta you gotta hike in for it to be camping. Yeah, uh, glamp, glamping. Can't just pull up. No, that's, yeah, just, that's slamping. <laughs> you just pull up right there. Your car is there. So every time you want to leave, you can leave. Listen, yeah. I don't see Chops doing that, but I also don't see. I could see Chops in a tent. I can see Chops sleeping on an air mattress. That's glamping too, right? Yeah, I get. I don't know. I yeah, because you can't carry that in the woods. I'd like, to see, I'd like to see Chops go live with a bear. That'd be interesting to see. I bet Chops would win that one. A little deliverance. Yeah. Oh, nah, I ain't, I'm down, not down with that. <laughs> <laughs> we might have West Virginia folk who watch the show. So you better step back. <laughs> hey, if, you had, if you had the ability to invite like celebrity or you know professional athlete, past or present, who, who would you invite to your Memorial Day picnic? Clemente. You'd invite Clemente? I mean, Bobby C. He's bringing all the food. <laughs> uh, let me think. <laughs> <laughs> that was bad. You hear what he said? No. He said, Clemente, he's bringing all the food. Why do you bring all the food? He, that's just the kind of guy he is. He brings all the supplies. Ah, <laughs> oh, that went over my head. Okay. Uh, I went over his, too. Yeah. Hmm. That's a good question. Uh. Tom Hanks, my favorite actor. Oh wow! Be telling stories. Oh yeah, that one. Yeah. yeah. So we're gonna That'd do the actors. Denzel oh. Washington. You gonna do actors? I'm gonna go um, with Eddie Murphy. Yeah. I got, I got Eddie that. Murphy. Oh, we'll go with Eddie. Donkey. We'll go with Eddie Murphy. What was your favorite Eddie Murphy comedy routine? Hilarious. Oh, I are we talking hilarious. movies? Yeah. This is probably gonna be bad, but I'm a boom, big Boomerang fan. So yeah, like, it's like a love thing. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I like coming to America. That was yeah, I like them all. Stupid I, 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 just, I just like to stand up with Delirious and Raw and Bunny. Yeah, throwing a shoe people. <laughs> do, 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 do. The ice cream truck. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah that, that that's was good. good. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it's still the number one grossing comedy show ever. Yeah, Aunt Bunny. I yeah. remember. Oh my God, did she sit on the steps? Do, 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 do. Yeah, yeah, she <laughs> fell down. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was good. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah, I'd probably, I'd probably invite uh, either Belushi Whoa. or, or Tommy Boy. What the hell is his name? Chris Farley. Chris Farley. Oh, my God. I, you know, being a fat guy, I like fat guy comedy. So uh, John Candy. John Candy. I love John Candy. Yeah, he was good. And Uncle Buck. Uncle Buck. Yeah, yeah I just watched yeah. him a couple Buck. weeks ago. Yep. Uncle Buck. Steve Harvey would be fun as shit, too. Uh, he, he's funny. Yeah, you know, uh, I, like I like Steve Harvey. I like Steve Harvey. Yeah, I like Steve Harvey. Comedy. I saw this thing. I saw this little clip the other day on Steve Harvey. He was doing his Family Feud thing, and the question was, uh, "What makes a man creepy?" And the woman said, "Mustache." And you know, he got a mustache. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> he didn't take it personal, but you know. But yeah, that'd be fun. What, what's your favorite thing to eat Memorial Day weekend? Burnt hot dogs. Burnt hot. Oh, my wife loves burnt hot dogs. Yeah, don't burnt. you tea? I just paid you some burnt hot dogs. It's gotta be burnt. So says Megan. Them. Megan, the, the, the more burnt it is, the better. Yeah. She loves them like it's that. cancerous, but yeah. Is it? Yes. You guys didn't know that? No. no. Do your research. Uh, I don't work from home. Okay, no more burnt hot dogs for no. me. <laughs> uh, you know what I like? I like either ribs or chicken on a grill. Yeah. Um, I love going to the picnics and getting like the potato salad, the macaroni salad. Yuck. They had the banging one yesterday. They had uh, shrimp in it. I never had macaroni. Oh, who salad. made that one? I don't know, but it was good because 
I never have that at my house because I'd eat the whole thing. Yeah. And no one eats that at my house. So yeah. I love going to all the picnics and stuff and getting a, getting those appetizers like that. That's really yeah. good. We had a little soiree at our house yesterday. It was great until until the, the rain rolled in, but I think everybody had a lot of fun. Had like 30 some people. Man. You'd have got the invite, but I knew you was up in the uh, uh, Cooperstown. Cooper 30 yeah. people. Rubbing yeah. elbows with the big guys. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to CC. Yep. Thanks, Steve. Who loves you, baby? <laughs> Dev, Dave Winfield will be the one I would have been like star. Yeah, I was. I think you know? CC could still play, don't you? He actually bat. He hit yesterday. He didn't pitch. Oh, really? He was. He he he, he had a single. Yeah. And then yeah, he had a single. Yeah, yeah. He had a hit. CC. Hey, what what game do you like to play? Like when you have a family family soiree or you go to a picnic? Cornhole. 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 <laughs> I like playing jarts, yeah. yard darts, where the you got those long, long, long things, and you just. Choo. So how many points do you get for getting it in? It's almost like playing cornhole. Okay. Yeah. What's? Uh, Do you guys ever play ladder ball? No. What the hell is that? So you got like two golf balls at the end of a rope on a string. Yeah. Oh, I see. And then it. you and then you toss it, uh -huh. and there's like three tiers. Uh -huh. One, two, three. And if you get it on the bottom, it's three points. Two, one. And it's just something to play. It's pretty cool. Is it? Yeah. I, I I made a set. You did? Yeah, out of out of uh, PVC pipe. Would you drill through this, the golf ball? Yeah. Made uh, it. Wow, yeah, that's pretty cool. That's impressive as hell. Yeah. Who knew you were handy? Huh? Who knew you were handy? His wife. Jack. Jack Andy. <laughs> hey, you guys watch any sports from Memorial Day weekend? You got car racing, Formula no. One, no. NASCAR, the no. Indy 500's on tomorrow, right? No. Or is it on today? today? I think it's on today. Yeah. That's the only options I have? That's, that's, that's you know, I mean, baseball's the on today. The traditional stuff, yeah. Yeah. Basketball? A lot going on. Basketball, basketball right hockey, now. yeah. We got who's who's going to shine at the end of the day? Who's going to play for the for the chip? I think the Mavs and Celtics. the Celtics. Yeah. That'll be a good series, though, right? Yeah. Luka? I, I like the parody in NBA right now, actually. I do. Playoff parody? Yeah. Okay. There's, there's, you know. You didn't like it during the regular season? <laughs> no. It's boring, so. All right. Just got different teams in there. I got you. I got I you. I think one of the things they could do with all these sports is cut down the amount of teams to make the playoffs. That way, it's more, like, challenging during the regular season. Mm -hmm. When you go on a long losing streak and fall out of – playoff contention you may never get back there now you win like five games you're like you know there's teams that are under 500 in major league baseball right now and i know it's only 50 games in but there's teams that are you know five six games under 500 that are gonna be challenging for a playoff spot as a wild card i don't know if i really i don't know i don't subscribe to that but yeah, yeah it is what it you know, is nba is that they did that in-season tournament yeah uh, could other leagues pick up on that and do something no, no. You think football? No, not def say, def definitely not football. I'm gonna say it's bad enough. You got a say, Wednesday okay. game and then a Sunday game. No, definitely not football, but like hockey, hockey and baseball. Do how they about do anything? How about you take your all-star teams and you play a best of three series? Whoever wins the best of three series gets home ice advantage for their for their conference for the playoffs. Oh, that's huge. That would be – I mean, we shut down basically. These sports shut down for an entire week, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So you want to make it fun again. Okay, you can have your, your skills competitions and all that shit. You do that on Monday and Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. You play your best out of three. Okay? Everybody got to play. You just fill a roster with all-stars. Everybody got to play. Yeah. Whoever wins two out of three. Um, I mean, yeah. baseball's changed a lot of roles. They've tried to be – relevant they have the interleague that's helped you know um all the pitch counts and all not pitch counts but timings and yep. uh base stealing and throwovers yep. they're trying to be relevant but it's just and the fan base uh, is, is struggling so yeah it's interesting i mean there's i i just that just came to me though because everybody's always kind of like well what can you do to make it better well make it more than just one game that's like a Flag football thing. Now I don't know what you can do with football. I don't like the the Pro Bowl. There's nothing you can do with it. It's just too much already. Well, listen, it's an 18 week season, I right? I heard they still have like a Wednesday, Sunday, 
Is that true? They have three games in 10 days. That's freaking crazy. So they play Philadelphia, the Ravens, and then Kansas City on Christmas Day. That's crazy. You don't think that's crazy? Oh, I yeah. think it's three insane. Games. Three games. Yeah. In 10 days. Yeah. And they play six six of their last eight yeah. games are division games. I, I know that. Which is also insane It's to like me. You're, the, the first games you're walked through for the next two. You're like, what yeah, the, that's crazy. You know what I mean? Like, what yeah. are you going to do? Day. Yep. Do you remember like Bettis would talk about the game after the, the day after yes. the game? Yeah. He couldn't even walk down the That's steps. What I mean. How are these guys gonna play three and ten? Go. Listen, I was sore playing flag football, so I know those guys are still playing rabbit tackle, playing tackle football. You yeah, gotta crazy. use your listen, you gotta use that roster. You get you get uh, 53, 55 man roster. You know, that means guys like, well, let's just say that for the Steelers, because we're Steeler homers. Uh, Jalen Warren's going to have to get a say, ton of carries. Right. You're going to have to have a third back at that point. They so somebody yeah, the squad. <laughs> yeah, but but I mean, you're going to have to have a third back to take some of those carries. You're going to have to use yeah. all six of your receivers on your roster. you all three of your tight ends. That way, nobody's worn out as you're playing three games in ten days. Football was not designed to play no. three games in ten days. No way. Unless no. you're playing seven on seven. Yeah. Right. Yeah, right. because there's no. No hitting, no right. pounding. Exactly. So, um, fellas, let's get into the main segment a little bit here. Nice. I got I got a couple questions I want to talk about here real quick. How does military experience influence a veteran's approach to sports mentally and physically? What do you think? Mentally? Mentally and physically. Uh, How does being a veteran, maybe maybe you didn't fight in the war? It, well, just for, me mentally, you're team-oriented. Right, and physically, you're never going to give up. Fight, yeah. fight, fight. Yeah. That's easy. Yeah. Hurt, hurt, right. Broken, uh, just beaten up. Exactly. You're you're not backing no down quit. nothing. No quit. I think they have that old school mentality. I, I'm in it. I'm in it for the team. Yeah. That philosophy and concept that we're a band of brothers. Yeah. Yeah. You you gotta do it for the next guy. That's what I think. As, well, that's why you don't see as much of that today in sports where guys are coming to professional athletes, athletics. I mean, from being a military guy or something like that. The last guy that I can remember was the, um, the defenseman from the penguins. Um, uh, only Mata. He's in the he, well, he had an obligation. He had an obligation and they said, well, you can finish playing. You can finish playing hockey, but you still got this obligation. In some way, shape, or form, you are going to have to go and serve your time. You know, um, I was thinking Vill Villanueva. Yeah, yeah, he's he's a good one. You got the football guy. Read read a little bit about El Villanueva. Alejandro Villanueva had a remarkable career. Bridges his service as a U.S. Army Ranger and his role as an offensive tackle in the NFL. After he graduated from West Point, he served three tours in Afghanistan, earning a bronze star for his valor. Transitioning to professional football, Villanueva joined the Steelers, where, he, where his discipline and leadership was shown on the field. His unique journey from the battlefield to the NFL highlights his extraordinary commitment and resilience. I kind of, well, they're saying join the Steelers, but he started out with the Eagles as a tight end. Right, I, I, yeah, I, I, I thought that was true. Yeah, he started out with the Eagles as a tight end. He had a great career. So with then Pittsburgh. he really bulked up. Shit, I didn't realize yeah. that. Yeah, he was a big dude. What is he like six eight? Yeah. yeah, yeah. He had a great he had a great career. And then he and then he finished with the Ravens. Yeah, what, yes. I think he went there for a th I think he signed a three year deal and played one year. Yeah, he stunk. You know, they were I mad. Mean, they were mad about that. The Ravens. Fans. He stunk yeah. towards the end. He did yeah. all right at the beginning nope. as a left tackle. Nobody told him to sign him. Did anybody say, "Hey, go out and sign El Villanueva"? He, he did know, all right, but the Steelers is a left tackle for. Yeah, a while, right? Yeah, uh, but that was impressive when he came out. I thought, yeah, he did a great job. You know, I, I agree with you guys though. Physically, mentally, um, you just have to be a little tougher. You just have to be a little tougher. I don't know. I never served in the military. My father did. My uncles did. His dad. Did, I always wanted to. You know, because of them. And then my parents were like, "The hell you is have your you know <laughs> have, having your brothers back." Going to war, yeah, in a sense. Not, and I think know. that's what team sports taught me. But then, like, to really magnify that in the military, you always got to be on guard. You always got to be with it. 
and have yeah. other people's back. I thought that that was the true, true mark of a, a champion. Know, champion. There. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, I'll buy that. Hey, how about this one? What impact have veterans had on the culture and ethos of professional sports teams? Like when those guys when those guys end up being drafted, when they end up coming back and playing for a team, you know, what do they what do they do for that team? I, I know we talked about the physical and mental approach. We talk about the camaraderie they being bring so was, back. That's what I was gonna say. I was gonna, you know, what I think is the discipline. What I think is the discipline, you know, okay. even, even though we, even though we talk about the discipline of athletes today, um, I think you still had that stuff back in the day. You heard about how guys like Babe Ruth used to go out and get drunk and eat hot dogs and go to the ballpark. And there were other guys who fall in the same. Yeah. And they, they followed in the same, in the same way. But, you know, you stick a guy like Ted Williams on a team back in the day and, and he changes the dynamics of that team because he served in the military. You are, you know, and brought everything that he learned from the military to the football team. Well, baseball team in that sense. Yeah, a yeah. splendid splinter. He was an amazing baseball player. Sis, you got split. He got splendid splinter. Sis, let's go, Sis. Get the on. Splinter, it. who was splendid, Ted Williams. He celebrated as one of baseball's greatest hitters, no doubt about it and a distinguished U.S. military vet, serving as a pilot in both World War II and the Korean War. He interrupted his illustrious career with Boston, it's okay, uh, to fly combat missions, earning numerous co commendations for his bravery. Despite losing nearly five years of playing time, can you imagine what he would have done if he was still there? Right. Five years he was in the military. Wow. Uh, he returned to the majors, secured his legacy, with a three four four average, and he batted. I think, I think to this very day, he's the last guy to still bat four hundred. Speaking of great hitters, I met Tony Gwynn Jr. this week. No way. He hit a home run. Yes, yep. Tony wow. Gwynn Jr. Solid. Yeah, nice. Yeah, good and, guy. I mean, they were all good guys. Uh, yeah, but yeah, Harold Reynolds. Did you get to Did you get to talk to Tony Gwynn Jr.? Yeah. Did you ask him about his dad at all? Uh, you know, just talked to him. We was basically talking about the food. <laughs> we ate, we all ate together. Hey, Harold Reynolds ain't on MLB anymore. No, is that? no. He they pushed end. for some reason. They pushed Harold Reynolds. I, out. I loved him. He was oh, great. His insight was so incredible. Probably it was money. Well, ESPN. We'll just leave yeah. it at that. Okay. We'll but, leave it at uh, that. Ted Williams, 521 career home runs. Also. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, uh, you know who else I was thinking about? Uh, uh, Willie Mays. A lot of people didn't realize Willie Mays was in the military. Uh -huh. and I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. Willie Mays brought a lot to the table, too. Don't you have Willie Mays? I got Willie here. Uh, I'll, I'll also known for his baseball, extraordinary baseball, that over-the-shoulder catch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, do you guys, like, when you see stuff like that, like, I've seen that so many times. I'm like, you know, was I there? No, I wasn't even born yet. But like, you know what I mean? That's because you got to watch Grippy play. Yeah. Um, but also, he was an Army soldier. Enlisted during the peak of his early career. May served in the Army from 52 to 53, so two years, missing significant playing time. Uh, he returned to baseball, became one of the greatest players, as we know, of all time. Uh, known for around, all around skills. Hitting, fielding, base running, which I don't think he gets recognition for no. as much as he does the others. Um, his military service exemplified his dedication, resilience to his teams uh, on and off the field. I think he was one of the greatest five-tool athletes ever. Like he could do everything, and he was exceptional at it. You know, I, I bet you some of our viewers don't realize or know or listeners don't know that that is Barry Bonds' godfather. Yeah. You know, um, Barry Bonds goes, I know he didn't serve in the military, but he recently got in. He's getting inducted into the Pittsburgh Pirates. Yeah. Uh, so ring, of, ring of Honor. Yeah, very much deservedly so. Um, you could say what you want about Bonds' personality and things of that nature, but uh, at the end of the day, the guy was a great baseball player. You he know, was. a lot of people want to cry about the, the steroid stuff, but. You know, he still had to get up there and swing a bat and hit the ball, right? Yeah, and because the guys on the mound are probably doing the exact same thing, 
and so that made it pretty even. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We know we know that they say Clemens was one of those guys illegally like even, but, but it was. Yeah. But who knows? Who knows? We weren't there. Who knows? Wait, um, time out. Five tool. Tell everybody what five tools are. Uh, five tool. He, he hit on it. <laughs> uh, speed, um, accuracy, hitting ability, fielding ability. Um, hitting. Did you say hitting? I think I said hitting. Base running? And base running. Yep. Yep. My Uncle Pete was five tool. Was he five tool? Yes, he was. Yeah, that's that's quite a <laughs> remarkable thing. I don't thing. even got five tools in the basement. Um, I, I think that uh, Griffey was a five tool because he could hit for power. Mm -hmm. Mays could hit for power. You know, those guys, the power. Oh, it's fielding, throwing. Fielding and fielding throwing. throwing. Yeah, my bad. My bad. They separated those. Griff, oh. Griffey's been eating. Was he oh. looking a little thick? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You could tell. Yeah, he's it's been, okay. He don't got to play anymore. I mean, just you know, going you know, going on his you know off his playing days. You know, he was he was thin. You, and I always wondered like how he did all the things he did to be that small. Yeah, but, yeah he, he could he could he could swing that swing that. Remember, Kinseko was the first 40-40? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I think one of the best players in the league right now, if if you want to go down that road for a minute, uh, is uh, Acuna. Oh yeah, yeah. Atlanta, he is so fun yeah. to watch. Play. Atlanta. Oh, um, I love the Ellie Ellie De La Cruz kid. But yes, you know, I, like I think too. he really gets a lot of limelight. And you've got a kid in Pittsburgh, O'Neill Cruz, who's almost as good as he is. Yeah. Wait, when you, you know? say who are you talking about? The dude Ellie in De La Cruz. And, yes, I agree with that. I agree with that. You know, I think they're I they're very, that. very close, yes. neck and neck in terms of agree talent, that. skill. And I think Cruz might have more power. Oh, he definitely does. He yeah, his exit velocity is insane. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, uh Cruz. Hit two doubles. In, I think it was two doubles this past week, uh, 120 miles an hour yeah. inside the park. He hit it 120 miles an hour. Back wow. to get in front of that. Yeah. All right, I'll let the outfielder get that one. Yeah. It's just crazy. <laughs> it's crazy, some of these guys. So uh, let's go back to that question. Skills or qualities veterans often bring to professional sports. Let's just talk about uh, skills they bring to professional sports. It sets them apart from other guys that are already there. I think they're detail oriented. You need to know, right? Not just the X's and O's, yeah. but everything that goes involved into it prior to uh, setting up. You know, before the game, uh, paying attention to those details throughout the game, and maintaining that consistency mentally. Yeah, because you're going to have highs and lows. Someone's going to score. You're going to strike out. Yep. You're going to give up a touchdown, a sack, whatever. Yes. You you have to, but but it's in those details, and you always see the guys on the sidelines with the with the um, iPads and 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 watching the monitors and the dugout and whatnot. But they're constantly studying that game, the details, attention to detail. To me, it's probably one of the biggest things that they bring to the game. I, I'm going to talk about Arnold Palmer for a second. Arnold Palmer, known as the King of Golf. <laughs> Uh, uh, celebrated both of his illustrious career in professional golf and served in the Coast Guard. Wow. He was in the Coast Guard. I bet you a ton of people didn't know that. Uh, before becoming a household name in the world of golf, Palmer enlisted in the Coast Guard in 1951, where he served for three years and honed his discipline and resilience. Talk about bringing something to the table. Uh, his military service provided him with a strong foundation that contributed to his success on the PGA Tour where he won seven major championships and became a beloved figure in the sport. Um, his personality was off the chain, and he pioneered golf. He was one of those people who popularized golf because of that. Um, he made it accessible to a bigger audience is what he did. You know, anybody felt like they could go out and play the game after watching, yeah. watching Arnold Palmer play. Mm -hmm. uh, his legacy endures uh, not only through his contributions to golf, but – you know, his example of service and sportsmanship. So, also the best drink at uh, <laughs> the Arnold Palmer. Arnold Palmer, Palmer yes. Arnold Palmer. Half tea, half yes. lemonade. Ooh. And the base, Lake, the base from La Trobe. And we know what goes on in La Trobe. <laughs> the base has to be lemonade, more <laughs> more lemonade than tea. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, another shout out to McClintock Distillery in Frederick, Maryland yes. for, uh, 
letting us come in and do our show today. We're very honored and proud to be in here. It's a, it's a great place. If you're ever in Frederick, if you live in Frederick, if you're close to Frederick, if you're just hanging out and want to do something, come and check out McClintock's. They have a, a, a tour of their distillery. They have uh, a bunch of different great drinks they make, seasonal mm -hmm. drinks. And just, you know, like we're drinking, I'm drinking some gin right now. It's probably, probably the best gin you'll ever have. I mean, it's just so smooth, and you know, I, I can't say enough good about it. So. Yeah, they said it was silky smooth like Mark's underwear. <laughs> it's it's let's pause. It's really 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 nice. <laughs> that's thank only you, thank you, McClintock. Listen, that's <laughs> only what I'm wearing. I'm very <laughs> rarely wear underwear when I do it's something exotic. <laughs> What's that? Stripes. For? I got you. There you hey, go. speaking I got of you. stripes, Bill Murray. Besides my parent. Besides my my dad, my my grandfathers, both of them, and my uncles and all that, uh, stripes made me want to go to the military. It's like, man, these guys do. I can do it. They're having fun. <laughs> I want to join that. Yeah, yeah, those dudes have fun. Oh, that was the best. Bill That's Murray just. I, I'll tell you what, that guy's always made me. Speaking of people that I'd love to sit on, just him in character because I don't know if he's like that in real life. He he don't see. I don't know. He doesn't seem like the guy that's. Fun to be around in real life, just I don't know, but he, he, in, in character, I think I, I would love to inter interact. Baby with Ruth, him. not too long ago, he was dating Khalees. Who Khalees, who's that? Her milkshake brings all the boys to the yard. Oh, he was getting with her, Khalees of Paradise. Whoo, oh, good for Bill Murray. Yes, I don't know what that was about, but yeah, are they still dating? I don't know. She She's smoking. Smoking Good for something. Bill Murray. She, you know, she's probably like thirty years younger than him. Guess who her husband used to be? Who? Nas. Really? Rapper. Yeah. They have a kid. Yeah. Nas. Named Knight. Yes. Yep. 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 Huh. Wonder what the attraction was there. Oh <laughs> uh, <laughs> no uh, shit. Nas. Hey, <laughs> she. Can you break down Roger Staubach for us a little bit? I, I know we threw him in there. Uh, he was a good one to talk about. Roger. The Dodger. That's weird. They yeah. call him Roger the Dodger, but you he was not. That? But he wasn't a Dodger. Uh, he was one of those guys who would do the do the Kenny Pickett, except he no, wouldn't get sacked. You, like, you're not getting what I'm saying. Yeah. No, he didn't dodge. The, he he didn't dodge the draft. Uh, there you yeah. go. Thanks. Okay. See? Yeah. Same thing. Right. We here, Terry. We here. I got you, man. Roger the Dodger Staubach. I celebrated not only as a Hall of Fame quarterback, but also as a distinguished U.S. Navy veteran. He graduated from the Naval Academy in 1965. He served as a supply officer in Vietnam before embarking on his illustrious NFL career. Starbuck's time in the military instilled a sense of discipline and leadership that translated seamlessly onto the football field, leading the Cowboys, America's team, to two Super Bowl victories. He became known for his clutch performances and unwavering determination. Beyond his athletic achievements, Starbuck's commitment to service and teamwork remains a defining defining aspect of his legacy. I was definitely going to say dedication because, listen, if you're dedicated to serving this, serving to protect this country, I mean, what else is better than that? Well, I mean, that's putting your life on the line for yeah. a bunch of people you don't even know who don't care. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, it's just at the end of the day, that level of dedication you're taught is not something you just gain when you go to the military, I feel. I feel like it's uh, – I feel like it's something that you're inbred with and you want to continue that and take care of a lot of people. You know, um, I feel that way about people who are firemen, people that are policemen, people that are teachers, um, you know, because at the end of the day, you are doing the service for a lot of people and trying to um, just provide them with the quality of life in some way, shape or form, whether it's policing their neighborhoods, whether it's helping with whatever getting the cat out of the tree yeah whatever it takes whatever <laughs> it bag. takes uh for the bag <laughs> appreciate you thank oh, you thank you very Ryan, much right tyler 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 and zach no thank you yeah thank you i appreciate thanks, it thanks tyler we're, we're not always 100 i'm not gonna lie to you tyler and zach <laughs> tyler and zach two names it, it's like it should be a tv show easily tyler and zach on the nickelodeon yes Easy. You guys used to be on Nickelodeon? Tyler and Zach? No, no, Zach and Zach and Zach Cody. and Cody. I got it. <laughs> hey, uh, she did 
Machine Dude Staubach. I, I want to jump over to another one of mine. Uh, this is one of my all-time favorite guys, uh, Joe Lewis. Uh, Joe oh, Lewis. Oh, oh. He was known as the Brown Bomber, um, Brown legendary Bomber. heavyweight boxing champion. Uh, he was in the he was a U.S. Army veteran. I don't know if you guys knew that. Um, no. uh -oh. He held the heavyweight title from 37 to 49. Uh, Lewis's boxing career got interrupted when he went to World War II. Wow. He enlisted. In, he enlisted. He enlisted people. He enlisted. Yeah, he wasn't drafted. He, he, he was a heavyweight boxing champion. He enlisted. Okay. In 1942 and spent the war years primarily in morale boosting activities, which, okay, he was still part of it, though. <laughs> um, he had exhibition matches for the troops. Or, uh, he earned a lot of uh, respect and admiration from those guys. Um, yeah. he, he, look, it be, beyond the ring and battlefield, he also played a significant role in breaking racial barriers in America. Joe Lewis did. That's why they got the Joe Lewis Arena in Detroit. Sure. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's gone. Uh, really? What's Detroit playing? I think that's gone. Okay. Well, they should have named the new one Joe Lewis Arena if they didn't. Yeah. I think that's um, his legacy is a powerful blend of athletic excellence, patriotic service, and social impact. Okay? That's that's who Joe, Joe Lewis is. Put him was. up, Joe. Yeah. You know, when you think about it, he's one of the groundbreaking guys along with, with Jackie Robinson to do that. Right. Before right. my time you know? again, obviously, all, all of our times, but you just see the videos and it's like, damn, I, I must have been there. But nope. Uh, he was awesome. Joe Lewis Arena closed in 2017. It was demolished in 2020. There you That's go. too bad. Yeah. That's too bad. I did not realize that. I thought they they kept <clears throat> that around for stuff. It's now called the Little Caesars Arena. Oh, that's right. Because the guy who owns Little Caesars owns Detroit Red Wings, Detroit Tigers, but not the Lions. The Lions are owned by a different family. Well, damn Little Caesars. You used to be able to roll right up in there and get a $5 pizza. Now it's like over $5, and you're waiting forever. They not only that, but they don't, they're not hot and ready anymore. They, they, they don't. There's no Kmart's anymore where you can go get it in a Kmart. Yeah. So Little Caesars isn't that good? It's not hot fast anymore? No. You got to like go up, order Is it. Is it five bucks? No, no, it's like seven. Yeah, it's like more than five. I didn't know if that was good pizza, but. Man, you might as well go to Belisario's. Oh, shout out to Nikki. <coughs> yes. Would, oh, I would do that way over. Pepperoni, sausage, banana pepper. Money. Dude, that sounds good. I think oh, I'm getting, we're going to get one right after this. I got uh, she eat. closed on Sunday. I'm probably. definitely eating, but I don't know where. Uh, I haven't had anything to eat. But you're yes. kicking it around. Maxwell's right up the street, my brother. I might do that. Maxwell's right up the street. We're, we're in. Yeah. All right, who yeah. we got next? All right, let's look at who we can talk about next. Muhammad Ali. Let's talk he about Muhammad Ali. He was a Dodger. Ali. He was a Dodger. He was a right. No. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. I think it was on the, that OJ Netflix, whatever. But he was Cassius Clay then. But you had Muhammad Ali. You had Kareem. Uh, uh, Lou L. Cinder. Yeah. Um, Jim Brown. And then there was one other dude. The great Jim Brown. The great Jim. They were like protesting the war, obviously. Right. And OJ, right. OJ was like, I, I don't want to get in all that. I know we're going down the rabbit hole. He's like, he was worried about his image and all that. They like OJ. So they, 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 yeah, they were just like. Jim Brown didn't have Okay. Like Forget it. That's weird. Because Jim Brown. Did the same, so that's weird. But okay, yeah, yeah. that's a, okay. Did you see the bloody glove when you came through the door here? No, <laughs> the glove don't fit. You must have quit. Yes. <laughs> I stopped that shit. Oh man. <laughs> hey, how about this guy, Jack Dempsey? Remember Jack Dempsey? Uh huh. Remember yeah. the name Jack Dempsey? Yeah. Jack Dempsey's. Did you know his nickname was Manasa Mahler? Yes. And he was a heavyweight boxing champion. The difference was. Yeah, exactly. He fought. Yeah, he was World was War like One. Nintendo. Or he something. was a World War One veteran. Uh, <laughs> he rose to fame in the 1920s. He held the title from 1919, 1926. Um, he had that aggressive knockout style, like you demonstrated. Before his boxing career, though, he served in the army, World War One. He was stateside station. He competed in those military boxing tournaments. And I think sometimes those guys enlist because they encourage them to enlist to help with the troops, you know, to keep the troops morale up. Yep. Um, his military service instilled in him a sense of discipline, toughness that he took to the ring. And uh, Dempsey's contributions, both to boxing and his country, um, you know, really cemented it, 
his status during that era. So it was the Manassas Muller. So he's from Virginia, huh? The Manassas Muller. Manassas. Manassas. The Manassas Muller. What's, what's that question? Do you think that they, some of these guys did it for? I know it's a selfless act joining the military. Sure it is. I don't think anybody does it for recognition. Nah. You said he, they encouraged him. I said, from he, my perspective, it was from encouraged. my perspective, I would think that it was encouraged. And they told him he would have a role, but a role that would help to um, keep morale during that think, time. Okay, do you think that some that were encouraged like that were like, this is going to help the sport? No. Maybe. I don't know. What do you think? I don't think so. Because that's what I'm, I'm saying. It's such a selfless act. To what? So put yourself in that position. Let me ask you guys a question. Do you and know? I mean, like, do you know all the benefits they get? And I don't know if they were getting them back then, but like now, like I have friends who are went in the, went in the military, retired. They get checks from the military. They get 100 percent dis disability checks. They get um, kids go to school for free. And any you know college? Yes. Um, I mean, there's so many, so many. So I don't know if they were doing that back then. I, I doubt it, but so, but yeah. I think part of it though is you should get pretty much a. If you do X amount of time in the military, I think you should get a free cake. Well, I don't want to say cakewalk, but you should have a lot of liberties in life because you've put your life on the line. I agree. I agree. In, in, a, in a drop of a hat, we could be in World War III uh, with all this stuff that's always going on. It, and you don't World's know if they're going right to say, hey, yeah, you, yeah. you're getting shipped. Yeah. You know? I mean, like, that's pretty scary. Yeah. That's pretty scary to me. Um, I know Terry, every once in a while, say about one of our kids, like, you know, well, it'd be good for Vincent to go. And I'm thinking... Wow. Well, she just, I believe in the military, but Max is thinking about it. Max is? Yeah. A lot of benefits, man. Great benefits. We went to a career fair. He's, if he needs to talk to someone, he, I can hook him up. He talked to, he talked to someone there. And he, I'm talking about benefit wise. Yeah, he's like, I'm thinking about it. So I still think it's a little bit of a scary, scary proposition. I mean, it's my, yeah. Well, and then, and then I asked but, the guy. I mean, and then I asked the, the guy, and he goes, you're too old, sir. I was like, damn it. <laughs> Can I leave my wife and kids home and go to the military? You gotta I, run the I, I offer You got to run offer. the mile. Don't you run the mile? The mile? Could you run a mile? I could run it. It might take me 20 minutes. I, it might take, I had to like no, stop and get lunch or something. But <laughs> That's four times around the track, right? Yeah. I believe so. I, I couldn't run it. I could probably jog it. Okay. <laughs> What's your mile time right now? Uh, about 11. Yeah, that's probably what I can do it in. How much yeah. I could do in eleven? About eleven. I'd have to stretch really good though. I get cramped up in my my like. That's no stretching for me. I come out, I walk, I walk up the street and then take off. No, like not like that. But I start running. He said, "You like Jim Kick?" There's no. Lightning. What was his name? Jim Fix. Yeah, there's no lightning. More of a. Pfft. And then it dash down. I got a slope too, so it's it, like a pop like going uphill. Yeah. Like, that's what gets me. That you, got, you, you say you got a slope, a little slope going uphill. Yeah. That's I see that slope. Me. I'm. I turn around. Forget it. Yeah. Hey, who's got um? Oh, this got to be Sizzle. Uh, Bob Feller. Let's do Bobby. Hey, he's obviously a Hall of Fame pitcher. Where do you play? Boston. Cleveland. Mm. And dedicated yeah. Navy vet. Uh, <clears throat> he he went to the Navy just days after. Pearl Harbor. Oh, wow. That's incre incredible. Um, he served on the USS Alabama. Oh. Aren't you going down there soon? Yes. And uh, we'll be there, baby. During World War II, earned six campaign ribbons and eight battle stars. Thank you so much. Uh, despite losing nearly four prime years of baseball uh, to the military, he, he came back to the majors. Continue to dominate, achieving 266 career wins. That's an incredible. That's insane, actually. Uh, and, and a number, I don't know, I don't have the number of strikeouts, but it's up there. Um, yeah. He's probably the greatest pitcher in Cleveland Browns history, so, or Cleveland uh, Indians, Indians, or Indians, yeah. Guardians, or whatever the hell they're called today. Guardians. Yeah. Is that hard to figure out? Who else do they have? Did David Price pitch there? No. No. He was Tampa. Yeah. And 
yeah. in Boston. 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 Yeah. Yeah. He was a hot commodity back in the day. Yeah. You know, he probably cashed in. I've seen that, seen that curve. I don't know. I'm going that way. He was going that way. I was like, what's going on with this guy? He's supposed to be throwing sliders. He, he has some aces on his Jordans, though. He was a that's called ace. a screwball. If he's throwing it and it's going like that, eh, that's a screwball. It's like, you know who I want to say for last? I want to say Tillman for last, but okay. I want to hear a little bit about Rocky Bly because I bet Rocky. Rocky was on his the show. Rocky, the Rocky. Rocky was on his show with me. This is Shane's favorite um, Steeler. Yes. Rocky <laughs> Bly's journey from the battlefield to the football field is a testament to his resilience and determination. After he was drafted by the Steelers in 68, he was soon called to serve in the Vietnam War. Where he severely in, where he was se severely injured by a grenade. Despite doctors doubting his ability to walk again, shoot, not even just walk again. Despite the F still tired. Despite doctors doubting his ability to walk again, Blyer defied the odds, enduring extensive rehab to return to professional football. His perseverance paid off as he became a key player in the Steelers dynasty, winning four Super Bowl titles, more than Roger Staubach. Rocky Blyer's story is a powerful example of overcoming adversity and the enduring spirit of a true champion. He has a movie also, right? Yeah, Fighting Back. Fighting Back. Check out the Rocky Blyer story on Tubi. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it is on Tubi, huh? I don't know. I, I, think, it <laughs> I think it is. I think it is. You know, I had him on the show. He's one of the most interesting guys I ever talked to. Um, you can go back and watch it on YouTube, on, my, on our channel on YouTube. Uh, he talked about you know, going to Notre Dame and what that what that was all about, mm. and how he made that choice. Uh -huh. He talked about his relationship with Chuck Noll. He talked about Bradshaw's relationship with Chuck Noll and how Bradshaw just liked to stoke Chuck Noll. Mm -hmm. He talked about uh, when the Steelers were playing Dallas in the Super Bowl, and um, who dumped who dumped Bradshaw? Uh, who was it? Harvey Martin or uh, uh, Hollywood Henderson? Oh, there you go. And um, Franco was really pissed. And he got in the huddle and he's like, give me the ball. And they're like, nah, that's not the play that was called. And Franco's like, I don't care. Give me the ball. And they're like, no, we got to run this play. Chuck sent his play. And he's like, give <clears> me <throat> the ball. And if you go back and look at Steeler, Steeler highlights from when they beat Dallas, I think it was the second time in the Super Bowl, uh, Franco took the carry and ran over 50-some 50, 50 yards for a touchdown right down the middle of the field. He was Franco. so pissed off. And I thought that was pretty interesting to to hear that little snippet about what what happened in the huddle with that game. I thought that was just kind of cool. It's it, yeah. What you say about that is like the guys back then were like you listen to the coach, but to hear them speak out like that because now players are just so outspoken. You know what I mean? You think? <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's like to hear that a player is not outspoken, but like. Forget the coach. We're gonna run this play. Yep. That that, that wasn't heard of back then. You just did what they, you know. Was, well, they've got a lot of. It's like a subservient. They have a lot of shit. Mm. Like way of thinking. Back then. Uh, they have a lot of freedoms today, though, when they when they uh, run plays. I know Mahomes and 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 uh, the Wallers. Well, yeah. You yeah. Know, they have a great rapport, and there's a lot of freedoms there for those. Because guys. if they see something, they can call it. Yeah. And see something, say something. Yes. Exactly. See something, say something. Yep. Yep. Hey, sis, who you got? Who you got yet? Well, the last Yogi well, I, Berra. I got two guys. Oh no, I'm sorry, I only got one. You got Yogi Berra. Yogi. Uh, Yogi. Woo, woo, woo. Everybody knows, I think, Yogi, one of the best catchers of all time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. son too, right? Yeah, Dale yeah. Berra. You know where he played? One of the best sniffers. Third base. <laughs> Third base for the Buccos. Was he any good? I don't remember. No, no, terrible. No, it was terrible. Terrible. I think they played Frank Tavares. They didn't want to. Super, they didn't want a World Series. No, no. he All wasn't right. on that team. All right, but uh, he was terrible. Phil Garner was the third baseman on that team, and then John John something. Uh, but he was he he was a World War II vet, and before he played for the Yankees, he won. Uh, yeah, he he won ten World Series championships. Uh, he started before he won those. He was in the Navy, took part in D, the D Day invasion 
That's pretty wild. Man, I walked the beaches in Normandy. You were there. I haven't been in Normandy. You haven't been in Normandy? No. So that's, that's, that's pretty intense. I, I've been there, seen some of the bunkers and whatnot. Mm-hmm. It's wild. And to think that they could have avoided some of that stuff, uh, wow. but they, they divided, uh, you know, they kind of flanked them, and, and the Germans were waiting for them up on the hills and just pounced on yeah, them. Yeah. And, uh, but anyway, his, his military service exemplified his bravery, commitment, qualities he carried on the baseball field. Known for his exceptional skills as catcher and his memorable yogiisms. What's your favorite yogiism? I, I got one. Uh, uh, and I think I think it was a female interviewer, but beside the point, she said, Yogi, you look really cool today. He goes, Oh yeah? You don't look so hot yourself. <laughs> <laughs> he was so he, he was, was such so a character. different. He, he was, was so character. different than his son. <clears throat> yeah. Like Del Del Barra is he had zero personality. <laughs> But this guy, you know, he's just, he, he unfortunately was, was a pirate, and he was not a very good one. But can you imagine ten World Series champions? This is the bar. Well, yeah. And I, to me, because I, I, I was a catcher, I coach catchers, and just I, that's the to me that's the heart of the team. That's the quarterback. That, that's the quarterback. That's the yeah. only position that's seeing. You know, you're seeing everything. You're, yeah. Uh, that's the quarterback <laughs> of the team right there, the catcher. So, you know, whether you want to yeah, realize that, that or appreciate it or acknowledge it, that's up to you. But I will tell you, that's that's where it was. Uh, my last guy is David Robinson, the Admiral. The Admiral. Um, David Robinson, widely known as the Admiral, is renowned for his remarkable career as a professional basketball player and his service as a U.S. Navy officer. Um, oh, graduating officer. from the U.S. Naval Academy in 87. Robinson fulfilled his military commitment. Then he went to the NBA. He played for the San Antonio Spurs, um, two NBA championships, and he's in the NBA Hall of Fame, yeah. which is not unheard of because hmm. he was so great. He was a great leader, skills, dedication. Um, he honed, he felt like he honed his skills and things like that on the basketball court while he was at the Navy because hmm. he was always a smart guy, but like, he went in there. I don't know how great he felt he was, but he really improved his skills while he was in the Navy. Um, he became a dominant center. He was part of that Elijah uh all those guys. Pat Ewing. Ewing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, beyond his athletic achievements, Robinson's commitment to service is evident through his continued philanthrop- philanthropic efforts. Mm-hmm. Uh, making him a role model both on and off the court. If Navy is ever doing something or the Spurs are ever doing something, they always call on him, and he's always he's always there. He's always involved. I thought it was interesting whenever they transitioned from him to Duncan. They played together. And it was seamless. Toward yeah. the end, yeah, they played Towards together. The like, it was seamless, and there was no, like, 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 fiddle rivalry or, you know, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. when they start – Phasing out. I mean, they start phasing you out. It's like, let this guy figure it out himself. It felt like he was a, a mentor, and he took Duncan on his way, and he helped him along. Because he knew Duncan was in a Hall, Hall of Famer also. I mean, yeah. Like, this guy. Was, don't you feel like that? He was thinking at the end. Huh? At the very end. He was bad. At the very end. But don't you feel like that San Antonio Spurs generate? Like, it was like a 10-year run. Yeah. That they won, like, four championships. They, they were Two with Jay, uh, Robinson, two with. With uh, Duncan, don't you feel like they kind of, I don't know, they kind of were underlooked as far as NBA lures? Yeah, probably because they were too uh, clean cut. Uh, yeah. Well, you had Robin, you had uh, Duncan with the bad hairline. No, yeah, you had who's Rod- Rodman was there. Oh, Rick. They brought Rodman in. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. I don't remember that. I do. For the end. Yeah, the end. he was with the Pistons, career. then he went to the Bulls, and then the Spurs. Yeah. And then the Lakers. And then the Lakers. Yeah. yeah I don't remember I went to Spurs. I don't. Wow. I do. Yeah. He won two championships. Oh, I do. No, I do. I do. I do. He I won do. those championships with Duncan. Oh, I, do. I do. He might. He might. What's he got? Like five or six? At least. Corey, Corey has the most. Yeah. Bobby Horry. What's he got? Seven? He had him with Houston. Something he had like him with that. the Lakers. You have him with anybody else? Houston, Lakers. I can't think of him with anybody else. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Um, she, who's your last guy? 
My last guy is Mr. Pat, Pat Tillman. Yeah. One Probably of my all time favorite. One of the most recent ones. One of my all time favorite athletes. Pat Tillman is remembered as both a courageous NFL player and a patriot. Patriarch? Patriotic you? U.S. Army Ranger. Sorry. <laughs> the man is tired. Weekend hunt hangover, yes. No alcohol either. After establishing, establishing himself as a star safety for the Arizona Cardinals, he made the extraordinary decision to leave his football career and enlist in the military following the September 11 attacks. Tillman served with distinction in Afghanistan, embodying selflessness and dedication to his country. His tra tragic death in 2004 highlighted the profound sacrifices made by service members and under underscored his legacy of bravery and honor. Huh? Sorry. What are y'all talking about? I'm done. Oh, no, it says can update Crown. That's all right. I guess. Yeah, Doesn't come on. Matter. Did you? I just saw that they're still investigating what happened. Well, wow. because they they don't think it was friendly fire. Exactly. They mm -hmm. don't think it was. They don't oh. think it was friendly fire. So they think they think it was just set up. Oh, huh? yeah. Like Rambo, like a coup. Yeah. Yep. It's just sad. Serious? Yeah. This Why? guy. I've read a lot of shit about Why? that. I don't know. Which is sad. The mom, the mom, mom's still like pursuing it. They didn't want him dead. Like they wanted him dead. Like who would want him dead? I don't get it. He not. He might have known some stuff that we probably shouldn't know. Oh wow. So it's like a movie. Yeah. Chuck yeah. Norris. What was I, the Chuck Norris movie they were looking for? Him? Almost every Chuck Norris movie. They was always looking for Chuck. I just watched it recently. Chuck I, and Duck. I saw. Bigfoot saw Chuck. He ran away. <laughs> Oh, sis. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, the board was so scared of Chuck, it broke itself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, my Lord. Uh, what's interesting with all these cats we shared with you today was that, uh, you know, they dedicated their life and service to serving us. So, yeah. And, and to me, what's interesting is the guys who were. Man, I'm set. I, I made it to the elite. I made it to the league. I made it to the top of the top. But you know what? I'm going to put life on pause, as pause. the team likes to say. And I'm going to go back, and I'm going to help. That, that to me, that's like what we're here for is to help others. That's that's what I, that's yeah. what I was thought. Just get back. You know, I, I think the moral of our story today, and we never have a moral to our story. Never. But... <laughs> I just get back a little bit. Every little thing you do for somebody else makes a difference. You know, you give somebody five bucks, you lend a neighbor a hand, you give somebody a ride. Five shovel, bucks. Shovel their snow. It all makes oh. a difference. Oh, shit. He's buying He's my drink today. Guess who got the tap today, baby? All right, sis. Tell them where they can find you. Hey, I'm on uh, the X and Instagram. I think I'm on... Uh, Red. Facebook lately. Okay. Yeah, you are. I've seen you a lot. I uh, I've been getting all these notifications. I don't even know how that shit happens. And she at one T Youngie. One T Youngie. Yeah, that's how I roll. Found me at McClintock's. <laughs> right now. Yes. He'll be stretched out on his bench over here, sleeping pretty soon. So tired. Hey, uh, big shout out to our guy again, Chops. Uh, Michael Chops Mills. You can find him as the real big chops on Instagram and on the X. Um, don't forget to check out McClintock's Distillery. If you're in Frederick, if you just want to come through for a drink, check out the back bar. Whatever your little heart desires, this is probably one of the best distilleries around. Um, I highly recommend it to anybody and everybody. Uh, hit us up if you want us to send you some. No, we can't do that, can we? Maybe McClintock's will send it to you, though. Their gin is off the chain, though. Uh, so, again, thanks to those guys who are, for hosting us today to do the show. Uh, connect with us here on the Original Sports Podcast by checking out our website, uh, podpage.com, Original Sports Podcast, with Mark Meriday. You can like us on Facebook, join our conversation on Twitter, and also reach right out to us on Snapchat. All those are OSP with MM. And follow our Instagram. A lot more TikToks you've been doing lately as well as our YouTube channel where we have over 170 episodes. All that is Original Sports Podcast. Um, shout out to our sponsors. Wait, which way? Right there. Yes, sir. Yeah. Our, our networks that we are on. I'm sorry. Oh. Our networks we are on. Sideline Sports. Uh, Sideline Sports. 
uh, Let's Talk Sports Network, ESEN, Elite Sports Network, and Manning Media. Um, don't forget to watch our shows on Tuesday nights on Roku from 9 to 10 on ESEN. Let us know if you have any comments, questions, suggestions by emailing us at originalsportspodcast at gmail.com. Um, thanks to Medley, Steve Medley, that is, Steve for doing our voice intro, Charlie Hodgson, Jackie. for doing our music, and uh, join us soon. Join us very soon to experience the O on the Original Sports Podcast. Got show to close. Show to close. I am struggling. Where? Oh. Oh. Oh, my Lord.